A army hearties. Hi everybody. Happy belated Halloween. So I'm just gonna jump on and have a bit of a chat with my good friend Mary Claire and yeah, you know, we're going to just have a bit of a Q&A discussion regarding not-for-profit organizations, um, charities, and just some of the struggles that people are facing when it comes to raising funds, raising awareness, um, pulling people together to, to essentially strive towards a, a greater cause and, a, and just different ways and means of, of bringing people's awareness to what they're doing and um, yeah, just have a discussion about that. So anything that you guys have questions about, chuck them in the comments. We'll, we'll touch on as, as many things as we can. Um, if you guys have had experiences when it comes to yeah, not-for-profit organizations, charities, um, NGOs, anything of the sorts, really, really keen to hear yeah, what you guys have been through, what you guys are doing. Um, until Mary Claire comes on, I will just let you know a little bit about my experience. So I've recently um, formed a not-for-profit organization and it's called the Trim Tab Transformation Foundation. Send me a quick PM when we get started. Um, one sec, just let's get this show on the road. Yeah, so um, my not-for-profit, um, non-government registered private foundation is called the Trim Tab Transformation Foundation. Trim Tab is just to, I guess, elaborate on that because not many people know what it is. Trim Tab is the tiny little rudder on a on a big rudder of a boat of a ship that essentially, when the ship wants to turn, they've got to turn this little rudder that essentially moves the big rudder that turns the whole ship. And the metaphor is that there's a small change that's making a big difference. And um, obviously, transformation foundation is pretty easy to understand. So. My, um, my mind just went to, I I'm only one person in this big wide world. There's a lot of things that are, are going on. And for me, I just want to be at small change. It makes a big difference. And I can't take credit for it. I actually got that from Buckminster Fuller, who on his gravestone actually says, call me Trim Tab. Um, and he's an amazing inspiration of a lot of my mentors and, and for me as well. And if you guys don't know who he, <clears throat> who he is, because he's not very mainstream, jump on and definitely Google Bucky Fuller or Buckminster Fuller, Bucky. Um, there's, he's an epic, epic person and there's a lot that, um, yeah, we can all learn from him. So let me just see here. Okay, thanks for jumping on guys, good to see you. I'm wondering, do I, okay, you can't really talk to me. Does, do people invite themselves to come or request to talk to me on these? This is the first time I'm doing a, a double one or the second time. Or do I invite people? Camp Quality Escapade. One of the best experiences in my life. And we visited many schools across Australia. And part of bringing joy to these kids, it was empowering to hear the stories of the families and the individuals who have had to deal with cancer. Yeah, Steve, that's intense, man. Um... That's really, really cool. Is that, so is that camp quality escapade? Is that something you've been involved with specifically or is that from someone else? I can invite them. How do I invite them? Um, for me, I've got three, three arms to, to my foundation. There is mission for children, there's life coaching and there's adopt a pop. So mission for children is obviously to contribute to younger generations to children um, around the world life coaching is to contribute to um, just everyday working class people and then the adopt a pop is to contribute to the elder the senior citizens of our generation because i know that when i am an old fart myself i want to be looked after so i guess yeah it's um something that i sort of feels important as well so for me, the mission for children is essentially I've got a, an orphanage over in Uganda that, that I'm helping s sustain, essentially, um, with raising money for rent, for food, for scholastic and schooling materials. Um, yeah, and the adopt pop is basically where I get volunteers who have time that want to contribute some time, and they um, come and they become friends with an elderly citizen. 
And from that, they yeah, just join up because there's something like 40 to 70% of elderly citizen in homes that never get one visitor and that is really, really lonely. So, um, so that's that. And obviously the life coaching side is basically to help working class people just live the best life they possibly can tap in and become their, um, the best version of themselves. So very clear. So you just join us. Let me jump on and invite you in. You can jump right on in and come join me. Hello. hello hello how are you i'm really good how are you great i'm sorry that took a couple of minutes your um live notification didn't pop up and i had to go searching for you and then go oh okay now you're on good i noticed it was about three That's minutes right. no nah, stop your sorrows in a sack they're not needed here we're here now and you'd already started which is great i got the um a little snippet of what you started in terms of what you're involved yeah in. yeah yeah, cool. It's, um, yeah, I just set up a, a not-for-profit, non-government um, organisation at the start of this year. And, yeah, it's just basically to contribute to the community, contribute to the world and just start giving back. So um, I haven't been in the best space financially myself. I've got a lot of debts from some bad experiences or bad decisions in the past. And... I know that that's been a story that I've been carrying around and I just wanted to, to, I guess, knock that on the head. And also because I saw a lot of other people with the same story, I've done fundraising in the past and I've, I've done certain things and I just wanted to, I guess, be the example for people to get the fuck out of their own way and not have any excuse. And before doing the foundation, I actually started by just giving blood. So I'm like, I've got plenty of blood in me. So that's one thing I can start giving. And then I, um, I went on to give my time and, and became a friend to an old bloke at one of the old folks' homes and me and him catch up once every few weeks um, or even yeah, between sort of every couple of weeks. And yeah, so from there, just started the foundation and um, have just been carrying on from there. So when you spoke to me and said that you've been speaking to a lot of your audience about struggling to raise funds, struggling to raise awareness, w wanting to know more about how to create that sort of... Um, yeah, just, just awareness of what they're doing. It, yeah, it resonated a lot with me. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Um, so can I ask you a question? Um, yeah, go for it. Like why, you know, with the organisation that you've set up, wh why have you done that? Like what is it that has caused you to say, this is what I want to do and this is why? Like this is, the, this is how it's impacted me. Has something happened or, you know, you've got, you've got something to... So to, so to share. Yeah. Um, so to start with, I um, I watched the movie Lion. Have you seen that? No, <laughs> I don't really watch a lot of movies. <laughs> That's all right. It's <laughs> it's this, this story about this. It's a true story about this Indian boy who got separated from his family, and who um, basically lived on the streets and got picked up by, I guess the the authorities over there. And this was maybe the seventies or eighties. And, um, and then from there he got adopted out to Australia and lived and got brought up over here. And then when he was old enough after sort of or during his university years, he went back to India to try and find his family. And from there he, um, he ended up finding them and finding re reconnecting with his, his mom and his family. And it was, it's a bit of a tearjerker. It's a pretty full on movie to watch. And um, I guess, yeah, for, for me, that <clears throat> that was interesting. Like after the movie, it put up some facts like there's over 700,000 people that, uh, 700,000 homeless children in India. I looked up in Australia, there's over 30 to 35,000 children homeless in Australia. And the average adoption rate is under 8% on average. Last year was the worst, the worst, uh, I think it was like under 1%. So out of over 35 or 30,000 kids that are homeless in Australia, less than 300 were adopted out to homes and found that sort of safety and security and that love, which was just appalling. So for me, that was something that really um, just blew me away and impacted me. I've got a, a really, really close friend, a brother of mine who he's from England originally, but he has, he, he essentially never met his parents. He grew up on the streets. He grew up as an orphan as well. Um, and he doesn't even know his exact birthday. He, he chose his own name. Um, it's, and to, to be so close to someone that has, gone through that but being able to come out the other side of it which is really really lucky and amazing um it's 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 close to home 
Um, but the, the funny thing how the universe just sort of harmonizes and works perfectly together, after watching that movie, within about a week, I got a friend request from this guy in Uganda. His name's Kukuza. And from there, he, um, yeah, he just sort of reached out to me, started talking to me. My initial thought was scammer, right? Because there's heaps of this going around. So I was on the back foot. But I still spoke to him just because I did get a good vibe. So at arm's, arm's length, I, I still spoke to him. But I wasn't prepared to sort of contribute or do anything until there was multiple proofs that that could that I felt safe and comfortable that it was what it, what he was saying it was um, and it was just before the Commonwealth Games started in the Gold Coast which is where I live and I just thought to myself what would be the odds of maybe meeting some guys from Uganda here for the Commonwealth Games I don't even know if there was um, if Uganda was in the Commonwealth so I don't know it just sort of popped into my mind but we'll see and then um, one day during the during when the games was on, I went to go to cash converters just to drop some stuff off and get a bit of cash. And I was on the phone to my mum, and she was just pushing me so hard not to do that because I was going to get rorted and not get what I could get. And and she was for some reason it was just over the top pushing me not to go there. And I was just like, look, I don't care, like whatever it is, I just need to go there. I'm just doing it. And as soon as those doors opened to cash converters, there was like these three guys in yellow Ugandan jumpsuits with Uganda written on the back of them. I was like, no shit. So I literally just walked straight up to them like I knew who they were, like I was meant to meet them. And afterwards they said like, yeah, mate, you just walked up to us like you knew we were going to be there. And I, um, I made friends with them. I went out for dinner with them. I ended up dancing on the, on the beach in Gold Coast in the middle of the night for like three hours with these guys. Like their, their culture and their, their way of living is so different. They were so grateful to be in Australia and to experience that and to just literally dance in in the beach on the sand for like three hours it was um it was a whole new experience but i showed those guys kakuza and the things that we'd been saying and what he'd been sending me and and basically from there um they were two were a bit sort of unsure like yeah it looks like a lot of the scams that are over there it happens a lot um but one of them lived within a few hours so when they the commonwealth games were over these guys were the weightlifters um the, the weightlifting team for uganda yeah. Wow. And so when they, yeah, it was really cool. So I got to, um, I went to the, the games village afterwards and sort of hung out with them on their last day there. And um, the, one of them gave me their jacket. So I got a couple of pictures with this little Ugandan, <laughs> white, uh, yellow Ugandan um, jet, jacket on. It was pretty cool. But um, yeah, so when they went back home, um, one of them actually went down to visit Kakuza and the, the kids at the orphanage to just suss it out. And that's when I got, what I needed. I got the proof and I got the, um, the reassurance and the, the peace of mind that he was coming from the heart, that the feelings that I felt were real, that the children that he'd been looking after were, were there. And his story is pretty amazing because he, um, he was just born, not long being born and his parents and his sister died in a car accident. And then he grew up on the streets of Uganda in, um, and Basically, from there, he, um, when he was a little bit older, he managed to get himself a job. He managed to buy himself some food. And then from there, he started just taking food to his friends on the streets as well. And then when he had enough money, he got himself a place and straight away started taking kids that he, he knew off the streets and just looking after them. And now he's been able to register his own charity over there. And he's been able to rent a place where he's got like 30, almost 30 to 40 kids that he looks after. Um, and... Yeah, so basically from there, it, was, it wasn't about me anymore. And, and I felt like I'd adopted 30 kids and helping this amazing guy over there just do what he does. It's a whole new world. Like, I call them and they, they, they're sitting around there. It's not like over here. They don't have jobs to go to necessarily. They don't have things to do as, as we do. It's full on. And so, um, yeah, just seeing seeing that was just an eye opener for me. And so I've also, that was the catalyst to, to answer your question. That was the catalyst, yeah. but on a side note as well, um, I've also been learning a lot about government systems, about the history of how this whole magnificent um, Australian federal government 
corporation has been set up underneath Washington and London and the Crown and um, just learning about sovereignty as well and, and what people can do to go down that path. And so, yeah, it's, it's a, there's a lot in there and I'm, I'm really new at absorbing this information too, which I'm sure you've got a lot more to, to share as well. But that's sort of the two things really that have pushed me down this path as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm really glad you shared that with everyone here and me because I haven't heard that before. Um, and I think this is this really plays to the heart of how we can get these sort of organisations to do better and better. And, and we know they want to. And it always starts... Actually, I'm going to go back a step first because... And, and let's not forget this amazing story that you shared. Um, mm. We know that organisations like that are not-for-profit, you know, whether they're charities, foundations, you know, good causes, even um, support groups, even locally in your own local community, they are struggling um, a lot. Yeah. And it's because they, and, and it, you know, let us know what, if you agree with me on this, but if you think about it, it's usually, organisations are usually run um, successfully by one or two key people. And and everybody else is sort of just in the periphery. Like the, the ones that do all the hard work are, are just one or two. But there's a reason why those one or two people do that. And that is because exactly what you just explained to me, they've been directly impacted by something. They've felt something in their heart, which gives them this discretionary force of nature, which you cannot control. You just get pulled towards this because of your experiences. And, but what happens is one or two people can't do everything. And you, there are so many things that you want to do with an organization and and at its bare minimum, you need to survive. You need to, you know, pay the, yep. the bare minimum expenses. But yep. the only way to do that is to raise money and to raise friends. And I call it um, fundraising and friend raising. Right? And it's really hard. Yeah, I love when you said that. <laughs> it's really hard. Because, and the reason why it's really hard is not everyone agrees with what you're, um, what you believe in. Okay, so, yes. uh, and that's fine. But. And even getting that message across is also difficult in in um, in the old ways. So uh, years ago, we used to, you know, put an ad on the TV. Like you'd see those um, ads, you know, the orphanages overseas, and we'd all feel, oh my gosh, that is awful. Um, and you you know you donate because it's really great. And there's, there's a bunch of reasons um, why that is not as, as powerful anymore. One, because you talk about governments and things like and, and corporations I'll, I'll put in the same basket for a second um you know people have been ripped off so they're really skeptical about yeah. things overseas in particular and you said it yourself like you were like whoa hang on i need to proof get this proof and that is validated because it happens okay so that's one reason secondly the way in which we consume information these days and this is where i'll get into a bit of digital space we don't watch TV like we used to. So an ad on the TV doesn't get the phones ringing. Um, we we don't read the newspaper. Like we don't get that same hit. And even, um, you know, I, I looked at your LinkedIn profile to stalk you and I noticed you did a lot of direct marketing. Okay. So yep. that is really on the nose now too. People hate getting those cold calls. They hate the door knocks. Like even if it's for charity and yep. a great cause, People don't like that anymore. It's the way we've changed our behaviours because of where we've been felt ripped off. So, and and yep. probably one other reason, and that is that there's so much of this now. There's so many um, hard felt um, stories that are going around, or you know, different things that impact people because there's lots going on yep. and it's, it's a busy world. So, because of that, um, it is harder. Okay, so and you know, yeah, definitely. pretty sure everyone can agree. Yeah. So we need to work out. We need to work out ways to make it different. And the first thing I thought about when you started sharing that story is that is so powerful. Like if that in the day was an ad on the Super Bowl in America, you would get a yeah. lot of response because it is so yeah. powerful that story. And you're the one that shared it, and it, you can tell when you say it, it means something to you. But we can't yeah. put our ads on the Super Bowl anymore because it's very expensive and it doesn't have the same impact. And you're also spraying the market. And this that's a very yeah. business term, but you, yeah. you could potentially be falling a lot of deaf ears. So there are ways to do it. And I guess, um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to unpack that, but I'll take a breath in case you want to yeah. jump in with anything. 
Well, I think you hit the nail on the head right at the end there when you said it's a, a business term, but I feel, and I'm only new to this and I haven't done much myself in respect to this, but I don't view, I don't view the foundation or the charities or, or these not-for-profit organizations any different to a business. And I think yeah. that it's, a, it's, it's where a lot of people do fall down. They think that, oh, I've got a heartfelt story. So like, okay. I've done a lot of sales, right? And I know that when I get sold something and I believe in it, I just want to blurt it out and share it with the world. Or when I've read, I've read a book and I've learned something new and it's had a massive impact on me, I just want to throw it out there and just smother everyone with this amazing, profound knowledge that's just impacted me. But I do that and people are like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, chill the fuck out. I'm not in, I'm not in the mood. I don't even know what you're talking about. And you're not making any sense. It's like trying to tell a joke that you heard at a, at a live show and you only say like half the bits and it doesn't make any sense. And because that person hasn't I been feel like the it's, way you say again, because that person hasn't been impacted the way you were when you read it. Yeah. And I think it's our responsibility to, um, to learn and study marketing and business and current trends and what is going on because until we've really done that, like, uh, until we've done that and we've implemented all the all the different steps that successful businesses and successful entrepreneurs are putting out there and they're doing, we're modeling them, then I can't see why this would work. And, yeah. I, and I understand the, the troubles and the pains, but essentially what we're selling is um, it, well, what are we selling? We're selling to people of, a feeling of it's a feeling well what's the feeling that we're selling to people it's it's the belief that's what you're, you're selling and and what you want to do is attract the people who believe in what you believe in and that's that's yeah. the key um and you can you yeah. used to be able to do that on mass and people would you, people would find you because you'd be sharing the story on yeah. mass in old ways if you can find yeah. people who believe in what you believe then they're going to do a lot more than someone who doesn't believe they're going to listen for a start. They're going to ask more questions. Um, okay. And that's so my, that's can my I ask? Question. Yeah. Have you done Have you done much market research around? Well, first, have you got a charity that you're specifically working with, or a foundation you're specifically working with, so we can talk on that? Um, or not? Yet? Yes and no. So I guess a bit of um, and I'll, I guess I'll get into this, but this is an example of where where it can make a real difference. So. On the weekend, um, I went to a, a fundraiser event here in my community, and the reason why I went was because one of my friends is is um, going living through her journey of multiple myeloma, which is leukemia, and it's an incurable um, cancer. So, and that's been really tough. But again, like you said, like I've been touched personally, so I go out of my way to try and help her with that. And for her, she. Yeah even though she's going through it herself, she wants to help other people. And so she wants to do fundraising. So anyway, we go along to this event, which is on the weekend. And in Darwin, it's 39 degrees, hundred percent humidity. It is revolting. We go there and it's a trash and treasure sale. Uh, basically a bunch of tables that were out and it was really hot and sunny. So there wasn't much shade and they'd advertised it on not very not in my opinion, not very well. Like I think it had been on the radio and I think there might've been one post on social media, which might've been shared like an event. Um, but it was also pitched that it was a family thing to take kids to. So, you know, sausage sizzle and things to do for the kids. So we went along yeah. and pretty much uh, walked in and went, this is, it's too hot. The kids are nagging at us. Like we, we can't stay. So we didn't <clears throat> stay very long. Yeah. Um, my guess, sort of for watching from afar and seeing how many people went through there and the hard work that would have gone into that by those key people, that amazing amazing people that want to do great things, the hard work that would have gone into that, yeah. they probably raised, and this is a guess, but they probably raised $500,000 maybe. I'm not sure. Um, so that's the hard way of doing everything, right? It's really events and things are great to get people connected together. But you also need to understand why they want that connection and why they're going to say buy that ticket or come along and, and contribute and, and be involved. And so that's the first yep. understanding is understanding the psychology of the person you're attracting. And sadly, these guys didn't quite get that then. Um, anyway, yep. 
that happened on the Saturday. On the Monday, my girlfriend said to me, you know what? I want you to help me. I want to do a live video and I want to share my story. And I want my husband um, to be with me because he's doing some things for me as well. He's supporting her and um, he's actually shaving his head and now my friend shaving her head to raise money. But that's why we did the live. Yeah, sure. And the live was pretty much just me asking them about their story and what they were going through. And of course, they were talking about the family and the friends and the impact. And it was really emotional. Like it was, I mean, we had a bit of a chuckle yeah. through because we're friends, but it was emotional. That video, um, it was not very long. Um, and it just, it went, it ended up so, I don't even know the stats now, but it was um, for Darwin, <laughs> very small. It was about two and a half thousand people that it reached, but the okay. the my course page that she set up has already reached, I think, about two thousand dollars. So one video, which went for twenty, uh, ten, fifteen, twenty minutes, I'm not even sure. Um, yeah. One video and that much money, or a bunch of hard work and trying to pull people to come and help you and yeah. come along, and not much. Can you see how it's different nowadays? Yeah, absolutely. And it's just working smarter, not harder, essentially, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And we've got so, we've got all the tools to do that now. Yeah. Have you done much or any market research or have you been involved with charities or foundations that have done market research to actually try and find the right pond to fish in? Uh, you know what? No, not specifically. But I also know that I don't need to, and I'll tell you why, because <laughs> we... We know, <laughs> um, so I'm in digital marketing, marketing and the thing with digital that I love so much is you become an experimenter, okay? So you're a guinea pig for everything that goes on, including for your clients, um, because my, digital changes so quickly. So you've got, you know, Google, Facebook, uh, Amazon and Apple, did I say Apple? Big four, that they are such huge, huge giants of businesses, companies that, and they control yeah. the whole digital space. So yeah. they're always changing everything all the time. So as a digital marketer, if you go out and pretend you know everything, it's probably not true. You've got to go out and experiment. And because it's changing all the time, you continue to experiment. So because I'm in that space, we do that. And we what we do is we go and hunt in the areas where we know those people are hanging out. The people who believe what you believe, they do have a very distinct way of... Um, conducting themselves online on, and then let's use facebook for okay. example the pages yeah. that they like and the things they follow facebook knows that and they're collecting all that data yeah. so when you go and you use the back end of facebook and you you work in the audience insights and you really target and hone down on the very specific things that you're looking for that those people um are get involved in then the ads that yeah. you do in that space can then appear in front of them so and there's probably other things I could go into later too, but that yeah. for me is what it's about because you can reach them, but then it's not just reaching them because you can't just give them another commercial or another TV ad because that won't work either. Yeah, that's my something. next question. So what what do you find the biggest challenges are? Like if the, these, these people that are running these foundations and charities are struggling um, or finding it hard to, to raise funds and raise friends, what do you find their biggest challenges to be? They don't understand what is possible in the digital landscape for starters. But secondly, it's also, um, it's change. It's hard to, it's hard to change. Like I've been, hello, whoever that is. <laughs> you've been, you've been distracted. It's all good. Um, I have no distractions today. I'm really excited about that. I know, um, lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> as you know. Um now I've really got distracted. That was silly. Can you turn down, right? Shouldn't have said that. Can you turn down? Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. Now I've completely lost I'm what back. I was saying. <laughs> so Someone sad. remind us what we're talking about. No, the digital space. So um, I can't see the comments. basically oh, people, yeah. people are unaware of, of what yeah. is possible. Yeah. Okay. So probably for about 12 months now, maybe longer, I've been – um, talking about doing, you know, videos and live videos and I've been doing them myself and I've been showing people how easy it is. And even the people that follow me religiously, it's really hard to find that courage to do that. And it, yeah. it takes, I guess it takes you to start it to begin with and then you realise, uh, which a lot of people have been doing. But it also, 
it also um, starts when you really have no choice. So that sometimes it happens when you're almost at breaking point. And this, to be honest, this is the same for businesses as well. It, this all, I mean, you said businesses and the not profits, but you have to operate in the same level. And I completely agree, agree with that. I think it's, you know, it's a science and it's a process which will drive all these results and not for profits don't sometimes see it like that. So yeah. yeah, I think they're probably the two biggest things. It's the it's the change that they need to move away from where they are and step out, really step outside their comfort zone. And then also trust in the digital world because um don't know and I can't see any of the comments that are coming up, but you know, people may have um, tried these out these things out before or they may have used another um, you know company to help them with it and they might not have got results that they wanted and so therefore you're like oh see it doesn't work and you stop there yeah. but the ones that are doing it really well don't stop they just keep trying and they test and they pivot and they get yeah. other people around them so yeah to me that's probably the biggest challenges I think that they're facing right now and so have you got examples of um, charities and foundations that you have seen stick with it and go through that process and really do well for themselves? And then that's the, obviously the, the other side of what you're just speaking of is people that maybe gave it a go and didn't have some good experiences or haven't even given it a go. Like, is that yeah. basically the... I don't, the I'm not going to go and throw names out there because I think that's... No, not names, um, but that's just that's the experiences that yeah, you've yeah, seen yeah. there, yeah? Um, yeah. I definitely... Like, if I think about locally here in my area at the moment, there are, there are two or three that I follow and um, chat with quite regularly and, you know, we're always talking about things and they do exceptionally well. In in fact, yeah. one of them does so well that sometimes they get comments like, oh, it's like he, he's um, doing too much. Like, I don't know how you can do too much. I find it fascinating when people say that um, because yeah. it's a fantastic organisation, a fantastic cause. Like, you, you can't help but believe. Um but so, yeah. and and they really have embraced it. The other thing they do really well um, is the business shout outs. So in our community at the moment, it's tough out there in business. You know, there's not a lot of extra money to go around. We're not, we're, the, we're going through yeah. a bit of a, a lull in our economy. So to go and um, promote to somebody and ask the business to give more money that they don't really have, it's really difficult to do. And these businesses, they're good people. They want to support, but you need to be able to, as a, as a not-for-profit, say, well, like, I'm actually doing really well because I'm promoting this not-for-profit quite well online as well. And I, if I give you business shout-outs and I help you get more exposure and more, you know, the things that they need, then they're more likely to do things with you. So, and, you know, work yeah. either in kind or whatever it might be. Yeah, definitely. Can I ask, can you hear feedback mm -hmm. at the moment? No, can you? No, that's all right. Just double checking. I've got some fans yeah. in the house that are watching you do your stuff. So just wanted to double check that it sounds all good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what are they? What did you say they're watching? You. They're watching us. What are they? On their phone. Oh, all right. Yeah, cool. So you're okay. So you can hear like an echo when it's you and me. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> um, so I guess. Um, Can I ask you a question? I love this. Yeah, of course. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so, well, um, you've, you've been, like, you've been doing these lives for uh, how many days? Nine days, I think you've done it for. Is that right? Or eight, well, yeah, eight, about that. Eight, yeah. Eight, 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 yeah. Eight or nine, yeah. How are you, like, you have, um, you have not-for-profits and you obviously um, need to make some money as well. And so I'm assuming, and I've looked at your LinkedIn, you probably pretty business savvy as well like how have you found in particular these lives because you've been getting really deep and you've been connecting with people from what i can see from afar in a different yeah. way so can you share that yeah. feedback with me because i think that's going to help some not-for-profits out there to be honest yeah look i guess i can see the journey i can see like this journey that i've been on there's been a few stages sort of like climbing Everest there's a few different base camps to get through um the first base camp was really overcoming my own fears and anxieties and insecurities about just being on camera and talking and looking at myself and um getting over my own bullshit that was a big one and that's that's huge for people starting out and, and it's the only reason that people aren't doing it if people aren't yeah. doing it it's because yeah. of those fears nothing else 
in my opinion. Yeah. Um, what was the catalyst for that shift to me, for me to overcome that was the comments and the feedback I was getting from people seeing that the things that I was saying was so profound and impacting people in such a, a big way that it was no longer about me anymore. It's like if, if what I was saying was having that impact on them, then by me not saying whatever I've got to say in the future is, is stopping people from having those shifts and, and having um, those epiphanies and, and helping them get over whatever. Now, Preston Smiles is one of the guys I've been modeling and looking up to recently. And I had a, a quick chat with him and he said to me, like, I asked him, do you get yourself into a state before these videos? Because he's got a lot of energy. He's really powerful. He's really impactful. And he just said to me, I just, I just think to myself and get myself into a state that whatever I'm about to say could impact and change somebody's life. And I'm talking to yeah, that yeah. person. And that's the only person yeah, I'm talking yeah. to. I'm not talking about to my network. I'm not talking about all these people. I'm talking to the one person that might be watching this who's in a shit space, who's doing it tough and who needs exactly what I'm about to say right now. And that's the only person I'm speaking to. And it, and just like the story about Kakuza and, and focusing on someone else outside of myself, I think that that's a pretty massive um, paradigm shift and yeah. shift in mindset for, mm -hmm. uh, you've heard me talk about the hero's journey in a lot of my videos. That's essentially the, the, um, the, the elixir of life or the, the magical yeah. potion is yeah. overcoming and having the, the death of the ego, the death of the self and the death of our own wants and, and worldly desires and the rebirth of um, this machine that just gives and, and mindset that focuses outside of ourself, relinquishes the need for what we feel we want and knows that our true power is going to be in, in giving and, and providing and, and being of service to other people. Because when you're thinking, when I'm in a conversation with you and you're talking to me and I'm fully engaged with you, there's no space for me to be worried about my own insecurities, my own limitations, my own doubts, my own limiting beliefs. There's not, none of that. So mm -hmm. when, so the best way to be my most powerful, awesomest, best, sexiest self is by just fucking focusing outside of myself all the time. Yeah, And that's Absolutely. just more and more and more and more just being reaffirmed for me time and time and time again, every single day. And I fall back like I'm human. I fall back heaps of fucking times and I go back to my egoic self thinking about all the shit that I want, worried about all the shit that I'm not going to get if I don't do it, freaking out. And then um, I, I come, I get drawn back again and I realize, and, and this is for me, the process that I'm really going through at the moment in just in, in life in general is really learning to embody that. And it's fucking hard. And there's a lot of tests of initiation, a lot of challenges that are coming with that. But essentially that's the big thing that I'm really recognizing and, and wanting to share with everyone because it's fucking magical. The moments that you're not in your own head and you're able to look outside yourself and the, and the, that's when the, the universe really harmonizes and things just things that you couldn't even have dreamed of happen. You could like no plan that I make is as good as the plan that I don't make when I'm thinking outside of myself. It's, crazy. it's so true. Yeah. And do you find though, I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, and I think we all need to practice what you're talking about too, because it, geez, it's easy to get stuck and dragged back down again into your own self. Um, it happens to me, yeah. it happened to me yesterday, yeah. but yeah. Um, do you find though, like when you receive that feedback, like I know people don't do this for feedback, but when they get it, it's that yeah. unintentional consequence of shit that felt good. Like it felt good that I could actually open up and then someone has said, yeah, Hey man, thanks. Like, does that make you feel good too? Yeah. Is that a fulfilling type oh. feeling? It's yeah, it's, a, it's epic. Of course. I mean, <laughs> when, so I've been doing a bit of market research recently for my coaching business and the, one of the things that hit me was that everybody got really deep with their answers and they thought they were all so unique. But what I found was that everybody has basically the same ambitions, the same desires, the same wants. They've got the same fears, the same insecurities. They're going through the same challenges. Um, and essentially everyone knows that they've got more inside them than that, that they're delivering. They know that they're their own worst enemy. They're holding themselves back. They know that essentially they want to live a fulfilling life where they feel like they're contributing to something bigger than themselves. That's everyone I've spoken to. There hasn't been one person that wanted, that didn't want that. And so absolutely to answer your question, like those, 
those feelings that you get when someone says you have just had a massive impact on me. Thank you. Keep doing what you're doing is epic motivation to keep doing what you're doing. And, mm. um, and it is like, it was a processionary effect for me. Like I, I did these go lives because I wanted to stop being selfish and holding my information to myself. I wanted to deliver content and, and impact people, but it, I could never have guessed how this was, how the impact was going to make me feel, how, how impactful that I was going to be. It's only been nine fucking days. You know what I mean? I know. It's crazy. Wait till you keep going. I know. The but stuff that has been coming out. <laughs> yeah. I completely get what you mean. And it's funny because like I'm in digital marketing, but my business, my background has been business forever. I was, grew up in business. But um, when yeah. we go out and speak to people, you know, sometimes I've called you because they need some help with something. Then I, sometimes I don't even know what it is. And they might, you know, come in at, at a maybe social media or, you know, can you help me with something? And what you're saying actually plays out as well. So I guess when you say market research, like I didn't go out and pay for a research to do something. I'm, I'm definitely yeah. been researching through experience and just and conversation. So I guess you we are the same thing. <laughs> yeah. just, just use different words that I wouldn't have um, used. But yeah it's exactly the same like people they're all at the core that a lot of the themes that you're hearing from people are common you know that it's the same kind of feeling actually i wanted to, don't let me forget i wanted to ask you about um how oh yes we must remember um my comment to you about how we we need to we, we need to surround ourselves with good people but we need to go through some yeah. shit people first I really want to pick your brain about that because the what what you said, so Matt sent me a voice message about this and it, I was like, I really want to reply to this, but I think I'll wait till we do a live. Um, yeah. Anyway, I don't, should, let's just go there because otherwise we'll get lost somewhere else. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is what I do. <laughs> come around. So okay. my thing was that I, like, I just wanted to get your feedback about this because um, I'd said to you, you know, it'd be great to talk about maybe how for me not everyone is for everyone okay so like i said before you got to find the people who believe what you believe that's partly partly but you also need something to snuff you out of it but i said to you like if yeah. you're good to talk about um going through a few people who are shit to get the good ones and what i just quickly well what i meant by that was you're not going to connect with everybody or you may find yourself with an expert that doesn't quite get what you really need so you know, don't give up just because that didn't work. Keep going. That's what I really meant. But you had a different take yeah. on that. So please share. Yeah. Let's, what came up for me just then was that, um, a lot of, like, yeah, it feels like we don't get what we think we need from somebody. But if that's what's coming up for us, what we must have needed was to continue looking or to, like, there's some other trait or characteristic yeah. or thing that needed to come from that experience. So we always get what we need. Maybe not what we always think we need, but we always get what we oh, need. But yeah. where I went to with that, when, yeah, when I got that voice message from you was that um, mentors and, and people in general come in and out of our life. And a lot of the times they come in and they seem like the wrong one or like then they haven't assisted us in getting where we thought we wanted to be. But looking joining the dots, looking backwards, a lot of time, it's actually that we weren't ready, that we yeah. resisted that call to, to action. And, um, and it was just, it was more so us that wasn't ready to take that leap yet. And, and we weren't quite there. So from my experience, I've got heaps of, actually, I spoke to my friend tonight. I was saying, I've heard my parents tell me certain lessons a million and one times, but it wasn't until I heard in a different way from a different voice, from a different person randomly, I'm like, I get it. Why didn't someone tell me this? <laughs> <laughs> I, yep, I'm hearing you. And it's the same. I don't know if it was you or somebody else was talking to. Like, sometimes I read a book for the second time and I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> like, I didn't get any of that the first time I read it. But now that yeah. I've reread it, shit, this happened, you know. That's because you, be ready. you always get what you need. And, like, you're not going to need 100% of everything or from 100% of everyone. And you always get what you need. So, yeah, when, when you go re revisit those things, of course you're going to get new stuff like it's it's crazy yeah so yeah, what do you, totally what's your experiences like where did where did that come from from you like obviously you brought that up today what was specifically on your mind and, and why did you go there oh look, 
yeah, so for me, going back to your market research questions, um, like, well, I mean, we talk to people in our local area, but also in all sorts of other places around the world as well. And you do hear the same theme time and time again, where people feel that they've been hard done by, you know, things of, um, you know, uh, I'm going to use the word, you feel like you've been screwed over because I can't find a better word. So, and it's, you know, I'm going to try, sorry. Everyone's got a story. Yeah. Yes, I know when I'm, when we're speaking to these, you know, these businesses, they've all got a story. You're right. So, um, and they've all had someone around them where either it, it didn't, you know, the, the relationship fell apart and so it was a win-lose situation for some reason or something's gone wrong and it's really set them back. And to me, that, that's, um, that hurts because, you know, you feel that deeply when someone is a business owner you just get, yeah. you just cop it left, right and centre. And it's really hard for others mm. who have never been a business owner yeah. to understand. Like, actually, I was talking to a friend yeah. today. We had a great conversation and she also has a, a really successful business um, in allied health. And um, she was telling me that she just feels like, you know, she gets, you know, she gets um, work safe and fair work and employees and, um, you know, a customer that's complaining and then, you know, she goes home and, you know, her family are nagging at her. And there's all these things that happen, which is, is such a huge responsibility and it, it, it gets you down, like it wears you down. So, you know, how do you keep going like that? And I think, um, yeah, we were talking about having the inner circle and making sure you have the right people around you to trust. And yeah, I guess it's that, it's yeah. uh, talking to everybody else to find those common themes. We're not isolated in those, those thoughts. No, that's it. And it is really important to have that network around you, safe places that you can open up and, and vent. Take a time to be a victim um, so you can start healing and finding ways to overcome it. Um, yeah. Like a lot, of, a lot of this stuff is just the price of doing business. At the end of the day, anyone can just go back, get a nine to five, be capped with their potential and, and, and be like that. And that's fine. And, jobs are amazing they're necessary steps and that's something that i've been definitely learning recently and and taken on board because it's something i've resisted for a long time um going from a heavily employee background and mindset having employee mentors my whole life my teachers my parents the the people around me are all employee mentors and to shift yeah. that to a business owner's mindset is a massive um uphill battle that i've been um yeah dealing with the last few years really and still are so um yeah. but i do see it a lot of it as just being the price of doing business because it's a lonely yeah. place there's like it's it's lonely there it's not many people are, so, out of the grand scheme of it yeah and are going to be really stepping lonely. out like yeah. i think the the most fun thing for me is that there's no guarantee on anything there's no clear path forwards there's no one else to blame or to lean on like no. you, it's the epitome of full responsibility taken on it and it takes some balls. You gotta, you gotta yeah. be a, like a, a maverick to, to get into business and follow through, especially coming from an employee mindset and, and from employee yeah, space. Yeah. That's my experience to, to but even completely just break back that mold. Again, like, yeah. um, you know, I think a lot of business owners, like it's, it's not a smooth sale ever. Like there's always something. And so, you know, these people, they're, they're like heroes. They get out of bed every single day and they go and they do what they need to do. And there's usually a reason why they do it. They, they are passionate about whatever they do. And like, that's what I, that's why I love, you know, working with businesses because it doesn't matter where you go in the world. It's that same feeling that you have. And you've obviously in your time found that feeling. Like how are you, how are you, um, you know, you've gone from having that life of that, um, what did you call it? Employee mentors? Employee, yeah. Yeah, so you've gone yeah, from that your whole life to, um, you know, into a business. Like, wow. <laughs> that's good. That's, that's, changing, that's changing my surroundings. Exactly what you're talking about. It's changing the people that I've, like, that I, I fill my mind and my space with. Like, yeah. books are amazing, right? I can pick up a book and listen to Nelson Mandela talking to me directly or Richard Branson or Warren Buffett. Mm -hmm. Like I can have these people directly speaking straight to me because they've just written from their mind through their hand and put it into a book. Um, you don't need to go and pay Anthony Robbins or 
Richard Branson to coach you. Like they've, they've got stuff out there for you to learn from them. You, can, you don't need to surround yourself by the people in your vicinity. You can surround yourself by people on the other side of the country or people yeah. that are on a video or people that are in a book. Like that's still surrounding yourself by people. And there's just there's too many excuses people have. If something's not working, it's our responsibility to fix it. And that's the bottom line. Like no matter what yeah, yeah. people come to me with, no matter what the story is, I, I'm, I'm so compassionate and empathetic and I understand, right, that there, there's some painful shit. There's stuff that's out of our control. At the same time, everything's our responsibility. And, and once we've identified and acknowledged this is the story, this is the place where we're at, and once we've allowed ourselves to really feel what, the, what those feelings are, go through those emotions and then it's time to get the fuck going again and really step yeah. into our own power, take responsibility for the shift that whatever shift needs to be made, whether it's within us internally or mm -hmm. e externally, which essentially it's always internally, but yeah, it's, it's always, there's always an answer to every question. I believe that. Yeah. So you mentioned um, Tony Robbins. Um, that's, yeah. that's cool. Cause yeah, um, we went and saw him earlier this year in Brisbane. Um, just to hang out yeah, with him for four cool. hours, which was, it wasn't like a one-on-one -on -one session, but it may as well have been, it felt amazing. But yeah. for me, it's not so much about, I mean, it was great. The, the what he did for us was amazing, but it's the how. Yeah. And yeah. for me, I think every single one of us has it within us to find out what it is that we do, what's our absolute purpose that makes it, make something yep. um, worthwhile and then use all the same methodologies that he uses to be able to reach more people all over the world. And I think we should. <laughs> and yep. I guess that's probably why I love digital so much as well, because you were talking before yep. about, um, you know, doing the lives and the people coming back at you and giving you that feedback um, and you yep. being able to connect with them. That's the one to many approach. You know, you can do coaching yep. one to one and that's great. But that one to many approach means you can you can impact so many more people and our new world allows that. And it's the same yeah. thing not for profits, getting back to that. That's it. Yeah, hundred percent. And that, well I think that's what this is all about, really, isn't it? This whole discussion is that don't accept your story and your bullshit. Recognize that the world is on a certain trajectory and and keep up with the times. Work smart, not hard, and Digital wares, everyone's online. Everyone's got a telephone. Everyone's got cameras. Everyone's watching videos. So it's just got to be done. Like there's, yeah. it's there's no two ways about it. Like you, that's just the way to go. If anyone's can I still, share a secret with you? Can I share a secret with yeah. you? It's not a secret, but a lot of people don't understand yeah, this. When we think about, um, like people say, oh, I can't do videos or what, why would I do that? What's the actual technical reason why you do a video over a post or words? And what they don't understand is that Facebook and Google hate each other, okay? They're these two massive, massive companies. They're, all, they're both racing to the get be number one in as a size. So they don't like each other. And now YouTube owns Google. Sorry, Google owns YouTube. Google owns YouTube. Google owns YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. And Facebook have videos. So they're in competition. YouTube and Facebook are in competition. So if you do videos on Facebook, guess what's going to happen? They're going to reward you. They're going to give you more reach. They're going to, if you do ads with them, they're going to, um, you know, the click-through rates and all the technical stuff that gets talked about, they're going to reward you for that because they don't, they want to, they're competing with, with YouTube. They want you on their platform not to leave and go over to YouTube. So understanding that when you think, okay, well, why would I do video, um, you know, there is a technical element to it as well. There's a return on investment element about it. Um, yeah. And the other thing too, I, I need to add this because I've been getting this a fair bit lately. I have a lot of people say to me, oh, but I don't watch videos on Facebook or I don't watch videos on YouTube, so why should I do it? And what I say is, well, you know what? Nor do I, okay? I don't either because, you know, I'm doing other things. But if I had a problem that I was dealing with and if I saw a video come up, and the, the headline, and you've done this, the headline says something that you go, oh, wow, what's this about? And you click. It, because they're talking to you directly, like you said, they're solving your problem, even if they don't solve it completely, they're talking about the things that you're feeling right now. The, the chances of them continuing to watch or continuing asking a question, engaging, is, is higher than if you weren't you know, trying to 
trying to show someone who wasn't in that feeling. So, mm. um, yeah, all those people are like, I don't do video or no, I don't watch video. Um, and why should I use it? Why don't I just do a post or a photo or some text? They're the reasons why. So is this sort of a plea to everyone or uh, um, I always a shout do this. <laughs> I always say I'm yeah, not no. trying to please people. I always say it, but then I do it. No, I can't help it. it. That's fine. Yeah. Man. Do it like it's well. It's passionate and you're real and it's authentic. Yeah, well, like it's, it's not like you're trying to push a product down someone's throat. It's you're, <laughs> you're trying to help people just fucking understand because there's been well, people that have been coming with bullshit excuses and you go. Have you been doing go lives? Have you been making videos? They say no. It's like, well, what the fuck are you coming to me for then? Go and do it. If it, that still doesn't work, then come back to me. Don't come back. Don't come to me if you haven't fucking tried it. Yeah. And most people do like, I mean, most people are in business because they want to help somebody else. That's it's human nature. So yeah. if you want to help someone else, you've got to share more. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, you've got to, I mean, really, yeah, maybe it is get over yourself and just, God, I hate hearing the sound of my voice. I hate seeing myself on video. Well, actually, you know what? I used to, and now I don't care. So I think yeah, you do get used, used to it. No, I don't. <laughs> like, Definitely. yeah, I mean, I remember, you know, when someone started playing my video when I was in, I was turn it off. I don't want to hear it myself. But now I, I don't mind yeah. so much. Get used to it. So, but it One thing I've noticed. Practice. You go. No, you go. You finish <laughs> what you're saying. <laughs> we should have taken a photo. You go. Okay. One thing that um, I recognized was earlier on when I was doing videos, and if anyone checks out my Instagram, you'll see that I, I, wasn't, I wasn't being authentic. It's not that I wasn't being genuine. It's just that I had like my video persona and my video I'm talking about now. And um, I could tell watching it back that it wasn't, I wasn't giving my energy. I was holding back. I was restricting myself. I was tight. And it was really fucking intense and made me really nervous and it was really scary <laughs> you can't relax, I felt all you can't. yeah <laughs> but i oh, knew sorry. it that's the thing like i knew that it wasn't my best i knew it wasn't my most impactful me it wasn't the most genuine i wasn't free i wasn't liberated to just express myself completely i was holding myself yeah. back yeah but it was when i started to not think about myself which we spoke about earlier yeah. and just let go that things started to flow. I can, I don't care what I do now in front of a camera. I can do anything and, and act like a fool and, and I'd love it. And it's got, I'm not holding <laughs> myself back um, because I'm not in my own head anymore. But that's yeah. like I said, like that's the only reason I can see why, why people wouldn't be doing it. Yeah, I agree. And I think I was going to say before, um, you know, people do that if they watch someone who's really experienced, they think that they have to be that good already. Um, and I'm, I'm not saying we're good. I'm saying at all. We are but good. that's what they think. And then, of course, it makes them fearful. But I'm the same like you. When I go back and look at the lives that I used to do, it's, it is cringeworthy. <laughs> but, but it was still me. Like, I was still just saying whatever came to my head. A lot of umming and ahhing and a lot of whatever. But then when I started doing lives and asking yeah. people what they wanted to hear from me and, and what they thought and, you know, give me some feedback and, you know, what do you think I should do? Everyone was like, just keep doing it. But they didn't give me any feedback. There was no criticism. I was like, oh, okay, well, awesome. So, you know, and now, yeah. I'm, now I do really embarrassing lives and I've become the queen blooper because so much stuff goes wrong, but people still watch people me. People love so, it. Because I you're know. authentic, you're real. Well, and how much, how sick are we of the infomercials and the, um, you know, the, dare I say it, you know, offend people, but you know what stuff, but you know, the politicians that get up and they talk and they've got a script and it's really, you know, when I have to read from or do a presentation and have a script, I totally mess it up. It's really difficult. Oh, yeah. Whereas if I can just speak freely, Same. then fine. <laughs> And that's why lives are such a good format. You don't have there's no rules. You don't have to worry. You just, you know, you just speak. No. Yeah. As long as and you I want, think what, I think the reason it really stands out to people is because we we are an expression of of who they, um, like their best sides. We're we're allowing ourselves to be seen. We're we're allowing ourselves to express ourselves completely. These are all things that people want to do. They want to not feel judged. They want to be able to express themselves completely without people caring or wondering or thinking about them. 
They want to be able to make a difference. They want to be able to reach and, and feel like they're adding value to people's lives. And so they see us and they support us because we are showing them an aspect of themselves they, they haven't owned yet. It's like, you guys I've are giving me hope that it's that. fucking possible. That's, yeah, yeah that's why they love that. it. I like that. Yeah. I love that. Cool. <laughs> On great. that note, that's any last great. thoughts? We've been going for an hour now. Like, look at that. No an hour way. easily gone. Yeah. Can you tell me, I can't see, like, are people watching us? Or are they, I mean, not that I, I don't overly care, but I, I just, if I want to, if there's anyone that we can say hello to that, that commented, because I don't want to ignore people you know, that like us. Yeah, we've got a lot of comments. We've got a lot of, yeah, there's a fair few on. I can't see exactly who's on. No, that's all right. What I'll do is... Um, Marianne, I'll this, I'll, I'll Jane, Satch, hey guys, Cal. Yeah, look, there's a heap of legends on. Cool. Oh, please. We have to go through the comments. So I haven't been looking at the comments. I'll see if there's any questions. I don't think there's any questions. Okay, cool. Steve. Jamie. Hey, guys. Lance. Mark. All part of the adventure. Hey, Mark. Yeah. They've been cool. loving it. Well, I'll have a look later and reply. But yeah, thanks to all those people watching. Like you, you guys are yeah, amazing. Absolutely. That was a long live. That's probably my longest live. There you go. Pretty cool. Yeah, that's it. As good, and not the last one as well. Um, yeah, any cool. last things that you think you'd like to wrap up with or share with anyone that might be watching specifically about the foundations and the charities, or anything to share about the digital marketing that you offer, or that you'd like to just put out there for people who might be looking for someone like what you do. Look, I, I mean, I'll talk to anyone. I, if, you know, if anyone wants to connect with me and just, you know, say good day. Not even if you don't want to say good day, that's fine too. Just yeah, I'm. Um, if you don't want to say good day, you can fuck off. <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> Steve has been encouraging people to connect with each other who comment on our different yeah. friendship groups. And I think that's a really great idea because you know we're all looking to expand our networks and to um, you know get to learn more from each other. So I think you know if anyone wants to do that, I'm. I'm one of those people that I accept everybody and I even go out and start stalking everyone's friends and go out hunting. So yeah, I'd love to connect with new people. So yeah, yeah do cool. that. Um, and happy to answer any questions. And, about and to be clear, that. you, you're in, you say you're in digital marketing. So you basically help businesses with their marketing online. Is that correct? Yeah, pretty much. But it does include a lot of, um, business support or advice and guidance as well and I think that's probably just because of our you know my experience been, and I come I can't help but get really involved um, and care a lot because I you know it's yeah. I don't like seeing people that are hurting and, and it's you know because it is tough yeah. and hard so yeah, yeah um what ends up happening is it's more about it, it ends up becoming like a sales psychology or a sales cycle conversation, um, which is why I think it's great I've connected with you because you've got this sales experience as well. And we, I mean, I've got yeah. lots of others as well that are in that space, but I think the more we can understand sales and digital in any business or any not-for-profit, the higher the chances of us succeeding. And so it, it does tie in together. So, and so it's sales digital yeah. and I'll add a thought in there, um, like support and care to get you through because it is tough. You need that resilience yeah. about you, but you can't do it on your own. Yeah, it's hard work. definitely. Yeah, but it's That's important. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's worth it. <laughs> it is. Cool. So Thank you buddy. so much for the chat. Thank you. Great chat. We'll chat soon, okay? Yeah, absolutely. Have, a, have an awesome night. And thanks, everyone, again. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. See ya.